relationship. Real universal sisterhood and brotherhood can be to some extent established on the basis of the oneness of humanity. But for, in order for it to have real substance, what is it that we really do have completely in common that can never be changed? That is the spiritual essence within us. We are forever related. It's only due to the ego that we forget who we are, we forget the relationship of our own body, mind, and our soul. And therefore, we forget our own relationship with God, we forget our own relationship with nature, and we forget our own relationship with each other. In a household, in a family, if we focus our connections on a higher principle, then we will have the strength and the power to overcome the difficulties that come between us. And they will come inevitably. Real love in this world is not just about the sensation of the euphoria of romance. Because that comes and it goes. I have seen in my 60 years in this world people looking at each other in the eyes and seeing the stars and the moon and the heavens. And a few years later, they're looking at each other's eyes across from the judge's bench in a divorce court. And they're not seeing, they're not seeing the heavens. <laughs> they're seeing <laughs> something very different. Real love has to be earned. I remember when I was a child, I think I was about eight or nine years old. My mother was putting cosmetics on her eyelashes. And I was sitting on her bed watching her as she was in front of the mirror. It's like yesterday. Although it was over 50 years ago. And she said to me, Everyone loves your father, and everyone loves me, but we do not love each other anymore. We have decided to separate. When I heard that, it was like the whole world just disappeared from under me. I felt so disoriented. It was like my heart was being cut in two. I was so confused. I started to cry. My mother looked at me crying, and she couldn't say a word, and I couldn't say a word. And I ran outside. Some hours later, my father came home. And I knew that my mother was going to discuss the subject of my reaction with him. So when he came into his bedroom, they closed the door together, and I secretly, don't tell him I did this, but <laughs> I put my ear against the door, because I was really interested in what they were going to talk about. And I heard them speaking to each other, and my mother said, I told little Richie what happened, and this is what happened. He cried. And I heard them both say, for the sake of our children, we are going to stay together, no matter what. Now, what I saw over the years is one of the deepest relationships I've found in this world. Over the years, they really learned to deeply love, honor, and respect each other. 
It was earned. And what was it that they did to earn it? They put a higher principle between them than just the problems itself. It is a fact. We can overcome many obstacles if we focus on the higher principle. In their case, the higher principle was their children. They worked everything out somehow or other. Now, if we take this same analogy and bring it to a spiritual platform, a purely spiritual platform, the higher principle is that we all have relationships, that every living being is a part of God. To forgive is necessary for any relationship to survive. Nelson Mandela said that trying to seek revenge on someone is compared to drinking poison yourself with the idea that it's going to kill the other person. Now, what does that mean? Because holding on to that vengeance kills your own inner conscience. My dear friend Bhakti Tirtha Swami used to say that if you are angry at somebody and you pick up a hot coal to throw it at them, you're the one that gets burnt first. But how do we rise above these angers and these envies and these arrogance and all of these other passions? How do we actually clean the ecology of our heart, of selfishness? That's the actual purpose of yoga. That's the purpose of religion. My beloved Guru Dave, Srila Prabhupada, he would say that real spirituality is not about being a Hindu or a Muslim or a Christian or a Jew or a Buddhist or a Jain or a Sikh or a Zoroastrian or anything else. It's about cleansing our heart. It's about awakening the dormant love of God that is within us and being instruments of that compassion in our life, in whatever we may do.